Hey everybody, this is HD. And this is Pain User. And we're here to co-cast a series of games in a brand new tournament called the IGN Pro League, known shortly as the IPL. We're casting this together. Actually, the first series of each game will be going up on my YouTube channel. A lot of games will actually be streaming over on, I believe, Justin TV. And the rest of the games will actually be found on IGN.com slash IPL. Uh, yeah, so first games will be going up on my channel. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Me and Pain User will be co-casting a couple of the games and series in this tournament. And this is the first series we'll be casting. It's In Control versus VT Spades. Indeed it is. This is round one of the winner's bracket. And this is a TVP on Zelnaga Caverns. We have In Control and VT Spades. VT Spades, actually a Terran player who has recently been out in Korea training with the Grandmasters. And really? I really, indeed, he is. Hey, last time I met him was last year, and he was he kicked my butt at at, at, ML, at MLG Dallas, but I didn't know he was training out out in South Korea as well. That's crazy. Yeah, he did spend some time out there with the VT guys training, so I'm really interested to see uh, how the fruits of his labor translate into StarCraft II skill. I think he's probably going to be a lot better than the last time I've seen him play. And uh, in control is the EG big man Protoss. <laughs> he is the big man. <laughs> <laughs> always, always been there. Always been around. He's a very talented Protoss player. Um, he's he's kind of changed his play style a little bit, right? He, he's not so. Before he was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna cheese in your face, do all these crazy things. But now he's kind of settled down a little bit. Yeah, the last few times I've played him, um, I actually had the opportunity to play him at the last MLG in Dallas, and uh, I played him a few times before that. And yeah, he's he's kind of given up on that and gone for uh, a much more straightforward kind of gateway style into expand. But yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, sure, it does work, and it's been giving uh, the other EG Protoss powerhouse uh, Axelab a lot of success lately. And I think In Control kind of realized, hey, you know, Axelab's had this three gate expand style really working out for him lately, so I might as well start trying it. And the last few times I've played him, that's exactly what he's done. So Three warp gate expand while pressuring at the Ooh. same time in the warp gate units. Nice little uh, steal right here on the gas um, by in control. I don't know if this is actually going to do that much though, pain user, because really, I don't know if VT Spades is going to go for gas heavy build opening off. He may actually go for some kind of one barracks fast expand. That seems to be popular popular build strategy that a lot of Terrans like to do nowadays. The Marine, though, will be uh, kind of focusing this assimilator for a while. And one interesting thing, Pain User, is these assimilators actually have double health over everything, all their counterparts in uh, in terms of gas. Like, the refinery has half the health the assimilator has. Yeah, I know. That's just uh, a weird little thing that, um, for some reason, Blizzard decided to include in the game. And yeah, assimilators do have double the health of uh, refineries. So it is going to take that Marine a really long time. But the thing about the gas steel that's really important is that it forces the Terran player down a tech tree that the Protoss player is comfortable with. He's almost always going to fast expand. There's no way he's going to take that second gas really early on. There's no way he's going to tech up to factory and do some kind of a banshee rush. So you essentially know exactly what tech path he's going down. You know what he's doing, and you can play based off of that. And not only that, because of the amount of health that they have, they're going to be up in the base for such a long time that usually you can get an idea of what units are coming out of the barracks if you want to use them to kill that assimilator faster. Right, and in control right here, I mean, he doesn't see the command center, but he does see the second barracks being thrown down. And like you said, VT Spades now kind of forced to go down with this one barracks command center opening. He's actually throwing down a couple more barracks. And um, it's looking really standard right now for VT Spades, I think, as he's actually got a single Reaper going across the map as well. And this is really important for Terran players to use this Reaper to scout the Protoss player. They can go around and pick off any probes like this one, but it looks like Spades didn't actually see that, as In Control is going to throw up a pylon on this map. And this is something that I know you, Pain User, really dislike as a Terran player. It's just all these pylons all over the map. They provide excellent vision for the Protoss player, and they even allow you to warp in wherever you please. Yeah, they allow you to warp in units wherever you please. They're great for dealing with drops. Um, they're great as spotters for drops and things of that nature, like that pylon that In Control put up on the right side of the map right there. Right. Not only can he use that as a forward warp in point, any kind of drops that are going to come down the right side of the map, likely where the, the medevacs will be coming anyway, or down the left side of the map, if you have a pylon at either of those locations, they're going to see it right oftentimes away. Oftentimes, you'll yeah. spot it before it even gets to your base. And you could even warp in some stalkers and maybe even pick off the dropship if you're really, really fast on the trigger. you got to be Johnny on the spot with that, though. But uh, hey, both these players are so good. And obviously, this is a tournament 
game. They're going to be putting out their A game, and I, I can, I'll bet that they're going to be showing us some really high, high class StarCraft today. Look at this. Spades throwing up a third command center, and in control is actually moving out with a very large army after going for three Warpgate Nexus. He had a ton of gas for centuries, and he's actually pushing out while expanding. Yeah, it's something that's really deceiving about the three gate is uh, a lot of times, even if a Terran player scouts the three gate, you'd be amazed at how many units they can actually spit out. It's really not even that much worse in terms of unit production than a four gate, and it's a lot less all in, and it frees up those extra minerals to get that nexus just that much quicker. So. Absolutely, man. And it looks like, see, Spades is really worried about some kind of a contain. He's all bottled up. He already has the bunker ready. He's pulled yeah. SCVs preemptively just in case in control does try and rush up the ramp, but really, Spades is uh, Spades is assuming that he's contained right now when in reality in control has his units all over the map right now. <laughs> in reality, in control is taking a little scenic tour over here to the nine o'clock expansion. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. Yeah, I don't know uh, what these sentries are doing right now. Maybe he's looking for drops. Maybe he's looking for wayward SCVs. Perhaps the Reaper. But yeah. It's oh, already been look killed. at this pain user. We actually have. A dark shrine coming up, very hidden up in this top left hand corner. The thing here is if, even if a scan comes in, it's not gonna scan that top side over. And I, I don't even know where the Reaper went, man. I think the Reaper might, might have gotten picked, yeah, got picked off. So now the Reaper can't even see the dark shrine if we go over to VT Spade's vision. Uh oh, this could be bad. The dark shrine is about a minute, maybe 30 seconds away from finishing and Spade's is like you said, man, still contained inside his one base. This could be really bad. He's still worried about the contain. He doesn't have an engineering bay, but one thing he does have going for him if he ever wor morphs that third command center into an orbital is that he will have three orbitals, so he should uh, have plenty of scans to deal with the DTs. Absolutely. Um, the, the key is just not letting them up your ramp and into your base. If the DTs get up your ramp and they are allowed to spread out inside the Terran main, they just wreck all kinds of havoc. That's the worst position to be right. in if you don't have a missile turret. So And, and his supply depot is lowered here, so Dark Templar could conceive walk in Indeed. especially with no missile turrets around and I believe the dark shrine has just finished and here we go pain user it's about to go it's about to get nasty man with these hidden close units a ton of them all over the map that SCV was able to see the DT on its way in he puts the depot up immediately Ooh. but in control wisely not trying to press up the ramp not trying to take down that depot it would probably get mass repaired and he would end up losing those DTs spades already has the SCVs in position to mass repair that but Spades really is so bottled up right now. Well, I just don't see his game plan right well, now. The thing is, as a Terran player, if you're bottled, bottled up on one base like this, the one thing you can do to start to mobilize is dropships. You can start to drop around the map, and I like how Spades has gotten a dropship out, but he's really not using it. He's kind of just chilling here. I would love to see him load up some Marines, go for a backstab somewhere, but likewise, in control, already has a beautifully placed pylon from before. It actually might not be able to see a dropship if we're able to come through the right side, though. But. Yeah, absolutely. Spades floating at 600 minerals right now, still hasn't morphed that third command center into Ooh. an orbital. Manages to take out that DT at the natural right there, just being a little bit of a pest, trying to trying to slow him down. Here he we go. Looks like he's gonna try and sneak a DT into the oh, main. Oh, it's gonna get inside the main pain user, and oh, this is brutal for Spades, but Spades should have a ton of comsat energy saved. Indeed, he does. That single orbital at the main has 100 energy, which means this Dark Templar might be able to do a little bit of slice and dice action. It might be able to kill Reactor, but in the long grand term scheme of things, not oh, that much. Oh, and in Boom. control accidentally sends his observer into the same location oh. that the DT was in, and you have to assume that a scan is going to go down on that DT, so why would you send your observer to the exact same spot? Probably just doesn't... forgot, man. Yeah. He just sent it over there, and it just got picked off, unfortunately. But really, observers are so important. You never want to carelessly lose an observer, Ooh, and uh, it's something you always want to be on top of. He does manage to sneak in there, kills a mule and an SCV, and sneaks that Dark Templar out through the taste secret hallway gonna keep <laughs> gonna keep that alive and uh it looks like spades bio ball is actually looking a bit menacing at this point. Uh, he, he has managed to catch up in supply in control looks like yeah he's just checking straight up to colossus getting that colossus range and getting weapons one first which is something i do not agree with at all here's a tip for all you proton players out there armor upgrades coupled with guardian shield absolutely demolishes Terran. Marines have a low damage, high repetition attack, and Vikings 
have a dual attack. So Vikings get affected twice over by armor upgrades. And what it does is it basically turns your Colossus into Ultralisks. <laughs> when you have that much armor and Guardian Shield, Vikings really, they just tickle the Colossus when it's at, when it's at that point in the late game and you have armor three and Guardian Shield. And who wouldn't want to have an Ultralisk in your army, right? I mean, that's a great unit. And even if you're not, even if you can't build it, you can get it by getting those upgrades correctly. Well, yeah, if you think about it, Guardian Shield is essentially chitinous plating for your entire army. Yeah, two. I think it's plus two armor versus all ranged units, right? Yeah. That's pretty darn insane. Now, the thing though here is in control, he's he's kind of gotten this different tech route. He's gone for Dark Templars, didn't work out, and now he's dropped down to Colossus, which I like, but I wonder is he stretched a little too thin. I mean, he needs no, to get a large number of Colossus out, and he does have three. You're you're absolutely right. I, I feel like this style really, uh, it doesn't give you the gateway unit backbone that yeah. you really need. You need and the fodder units underneath the Colossus. Exactly. The gateway units are just the buffer between the Terran army and the Colossus, and the Colossus are the damage dealers. And right here, it looks like In Control is going to try and push in with three Colossus, and I think he should have waited a, a bit longer because he has those two robotics uh. facilities. This could be bad. This could be bad. Here comes a move in. In control, kind of playing with fire right here. That's If he engages at this planetary, that could spell doom for what fodder units there are here. And oh, here we go. Force field getting laid down all over the forces. Colossus falling back a little bit and running away from the rest of the fodder. And in control, not attacking with his Colossus for moments there, which means his entire ground army is going to get decimated. And what a crucial blunder. In control may actually lose this game even though he had VT spades kind of contained for a good portion of this game. Yeah, that was not a good engage for in control at all. He lost those precious expensive Colossus and wasn't able to eliminate the entire bio ball. But the spades had a brilliant surface area for that fight. He had a great arc and he managed to clean up in control's entire army. And now uh, every Colossus is so important for in control here. He only has one up right now, but I don't uh, see this Colossus living. It's probably gonna go down. Down it goes, and that means only Stalkers left to defend against Marauders. Yeah, Marauders with Medivax and Concussed and Stim, and that's not the situation you want to be in. Those Stalkers are simply useless at this point. All they're really good for is picking off those Vikings, and I don't even think he has enough to do that. And it looks like the, save the third Nexus. for in control is going to go down. Spades is sitting on the gold. He has three base up and running, and he's producing off all those barracks. In control, really, his only hope is whatever, however many Colossus he may have coming out of those dual robos. That is going two more Colossus make their way onto the field, and this is it for Evil. He has to keep these Colossus alive. He has to micro them perfectly, and there are way too many. Way too many Marauders on the ground, which is going to clean up the rest of those Colossus. In control, losing the rest of his army, and in control immediately saying, Good game, go medal. Loser does pick the next map here in the IPL. Wow, what an intense game. I in control, honestly, I felt like he had a great lead early on by kind of scaring VT Spades with that three warp gate nexus push, and VT and, and uh, VT Spades stayed inside his base, didn't push out. He kind of just coagulated all of his units and never really did anything. But eventually, when he did decide to push out, he stomped the Dark Templar attack, took it out, yes. and he, he won the game, man. Like blood platelets, the Terran ball was coagulating in the main, didn't do anything, took a while to push out, and then. Got to hand it to Spades, though. He was very patient, yeah. waited for that engage in mid, and that was absolutely the perfect engage for him. That's the only way you can beat the Protoss ball. You have to have amazing surface area, and you have to pick and choose your battles very, very carefully, and I think that's what he did, and he came up huge. Very nicely played by VT Spades. Once again, this is a best of three. The prize pool for the IP, I don't think we mentioned this, $5,000 about up for grabs for these players, which is a huge sum of money. And once again, me and Pain User will be casting several games in this tournament. Uh, first game of each series will be going up on YouTube channels, uh, mine and Pain Users respectively. And the rest can be found on IGN.com slash IPL. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Next game coming up soon.